Our founding fathers knew what they were doing when they crafted the document that expresses the rights of religious liberty and freedom in this land. Unfortunately, we have a generation or two, maybe possibly three, who don't know what the founding fathers said or what they meant or what their intent was. I'm not gonna open up that can of worms now. I'm only going to say that there is a time to pick your battles. And Lord knows I have tried to choose wisely, but when it comes to the church, if that day should come, I tell you in advance, I will stand to do all that I can to protect our freedom and liberty, which we in our time may not see as fought for hard. But if you know history, and you know the foundation of this country. You know that there are things worth fighting for, and they're not, sorry, they're not the color of our skin that separate us. They are the inalienable rights we were granted as this country became a nation. Some of you have heard the church that has kind of been at the forefront of the state's attack. Um, issues between people, men and women, men and men, women and women, uh, and certainly people who are in ministry. There's a time for everything. There's a time to put aside our differences, including even our theological differences, to band together for a bigger purpose. Um, I cannot say that the sting of words spoken from that particular pastor uh, many years ago towards my late husband uh, will ever go away, but I must find, even for myself, the ability to let go of certain things and to look at the bigger picture, which is that these individuals are fighting the same issues we are fighting. Uh, and I'm not sure if you've heard, but um, that church was fined and sanctioned not only for holding live services, but wait for it, for having singing in the church. Now, I don't know where we draw the line where some people are already stirred up inside and other people are completely indifferent. But our founding fathers knew what they were doing when they crafted the document that expresses the rights of religious liberty and freedom in this land. Unfortunately, we have a generation or two, maybe possibly three, who don't know what the founding fathers said or what they meant or what their intent was. I'm not gonna open up that can of worms now. I'm only going to say that there is a time to pick your battles. And Lord knows I have tried to choose wisely, but when it comes to the church, if that day should come, I tell you in advance, I will stand to do all that I can to protect our freedom and liberty, which we in our time may not see as fought for hard. But if you know history, and you know the foundation of this country, you know that there are things worth fighting for, and they're not, sorry, they're not the color of our skin that separate us. They are the inalienable rights we were granted as this country became a nation, lest we should forget that, ever perish the thought. So I stand in solidarity, even though I don't necessarily agree with, um, albeit maybe doctrine or things that are expressed, I stand in solidarity with fellow pastors and churches who will take a stand against the, and it is tyrannical ideology of government that does not understand that in this day and age, especially in the last six months, where we have seen many people not only lose their life or lose livelihood, businesses that are gone, things that will never come back, people need the gospel of Jesus Christ more than ever. I will not be silent. I've had a couple of people ask me, don't you worry about what could uh, transpire or happen? 
to you? And the answer is, if it's for the church, no. Personally, that's a different story. But if it's for the church and for the one that I serve wholeheartedly, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there isn't anything that I wouldn't stand to do, defend, or protect for the sanctity of the church that we so freely enjoy, at least freely up until now. We'll see about that, but as I said, we'll do what we have to do. How would you